Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this little tutorial series, we're going to be looking into making a first-person shooter on FPS using the prediction setup. Now, it's actually quite easy. A lot of people have struggled with the first-person movement, but we're going to get over that in just this very first video, as it is pretty simple. So all I've really done is I have my, of course, my network manager, the basic setup, the whole shenanigans, also the prediction manager, and a predicted player spawner. That's just pointing to this player that I've made now. Now, he isn't properly set up, but, you know, just so you know, I have this whole base set up so that when we press play, um well yeah basically nothing will happen he won't spawn because well he's not set up so let's go in here and let me just show you what's already set up so as you can see the root is empty but i do have a root and i have the visuals disconnected this is obviously important for prediction and you can see we have a body that still has the capsule collider and we have a camera set up with a gun under or like nested under it now this camera actually has a script this is the only thing with a script so let's just start by going ahead looking into that and just showing you exactly what that looks like so it's really just a simple single player script. As you can see, it's just a mono behavior. All it really has is some look sensitivity, some max look angle, and a reference to the cinema machine camera. And then internally, it's keeping track of its looks rotation and whether it's been initialized or not. And I've also just made this little getter here so we can actually get the forward direction. And the only reason for that is just because we want to convert from this you know, internal rotation that we're tracking to an actual forward direction as if it was its own transform. And this will come in important in a bit. Now going further down, of course, in the wake, we're just setting the priority to minus one because, well, we're just going to assume that we're not the owner. And if we are the owner, initialize will be called from our movement script. And inside late update is really why the magic happens. If it is initialized, then it'll run the mouse X and the mouse Y with the look, look sensitivity. And it'll essentially just modify the current rotation given this and then set its own rotation only on the x-axis. And that's because we're going to be doing the y rotation on the player itself, so you can actually see it rotate. Okay, cool. So let's go into the player movement, which I've already set up an empty script for. And so here you can essentially see everything that's already set up. It's just a predicted identity. It has a move input and a move state. Uh, and that's essentially just what it's set up with and the simulate state. So this is really just pretty much an empty predicted identity, except you'll notice in the input, I've already prepared two things. I've prepared the move direction, you know, the direction that we wish to move with WSD or controller or whatever you want to use, and a camera forward. And this is, funnily enough, what's going to be matching this one. And I'll talk about that in a bit, but let's just start by setting up the actual basics. So let's open the get final input or override it. And let's set the input.move direction equals two and let's just build a new vector three and let's just use the old or vector two sorry and let's just use the old input system so you can see here we use horizontal and vertical and then we're also going to be sending through the absolute value of the camera forward so input dot camera forward equals two and here we actually need a reference to our camera so let's make a serialized field private first person camera now i'm just going to call underscore camera and with that reference, we're going to do underscore camera and reference that forward that I built in here. Now, the reason for this, and that there's a few things going around this sending an absolute value. First of all, normally you might think that you'd want to send an input as if, for example, how much did the mouse move between last tick? And you can't do that. That's called just sending the delta, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, however, the only thing there is with that is if now there is a misprediction, there is a stutter, and you could reconcile backwards then your mouse might jitter, that might feel bad, right? You might feel like you lose control for a split second or your, your actual visuals rotate. Your actual camera gets force rotated for you. And generally, we don't want to do that. That's going to create a very unpleasant experience for the player. And so we're just sending the absolute value instead. And so that's also why generally input with prediction, you have to think of just anything that gets sent from client to server. It doesn't have to be keyboard input as you might think of input normally. It just means anything that the client inputs to the server simulation. Um, and so therefore we can just send the direct camera forward. And now you might also think, well, Bobsy, does not mean that they can cheat it? And you'd be right. They can technically send whatever value they want here because it's input, right? Input tends to be generally unsafe. However, they could do that anyway. Even if they sent the mouse delta, it doesn't matter because they could also just fake how much did the mouse move. We don't really have a way of controlling that. That's also why aimbots in shooter games is such a big problem is there's not really a great solution for it. You have to detect it by other means, really. And the last thing regarding this that's very important to mention is the extrapolation of prediction. So if you look here on the player movement, you can see there is a repeat input factor and an extrapolate input. And generally, you do want to extrapolate input, but there might be cases where you don't. And the repeat input factor deciphers how far into the future is it willing to extrapolate the input. 
This is because if you're, let's say, 500 ping behind, we don't necessarily want to extrapolate the input 500 ping into the future because this can create some really big overshooting issues and other trouble, really. So that's really why we've done some internal testing to find the correct sort of base number, which is what this repeat input factor is based off of. Um, but you can, of course, just modify this. But this does also mean that if it gets far enough into the future, it'll start sending default values to really avoid any issues. And for things like move direction that essentially just acts as a delta, that's not a problem. But for absolute values, that does create a problem because all of a sudden in the future, when we're actually setting our rotation, we'll be setting it to vector3.0, right? Because that's the default that will be sent if we are far enough into the future, which can create for some really wacky rotation. And, but it's very easy, luckily for us, in order to avoid that, all we have to do is just make it nullable. So now we can make it nullable, so that means we can actually check if it does have a valid value or not. Now, let's also sanitize the input. Sanitizing the input essentially means that everybody runs this to make sure that the input is trustworthy once it reaches the simulation. And all I really just want to do is make sure that if the input .move direction magnitude is greater than 1, that means, you know, it's too large. We don't want them moving that much. We're just going to do input.move.direction.normalize. And that's essentially it. Now it's sanitized and we can safely use it in the simulation. Now let's also set up some of the other things that we need to use. So let's set up a serialized field for the predicted rigid body. And we're just going to call that rigid body. And let's also just make some quick fields for private load for the move speed. Let's just set a move speed of, I don't know, 7. And let's also make one that we call acceleration. And I'm just going to make that 20. All right, cool. So now we have that. Let's actually build out our simulation. So first of all, let's build out a target velocity, a velocity that we essentially want to move towards. And I'm just going to make it with transform.forward times input.movedirection.y. And we're going to add to that the transform.right times input.movedirection.x. And then we're going to times that with the move speed. This is essentially how fast that we want to move. And now with this, we can just do rigidbody.addForce and we can add the target velocity times the acceleration value. This also means that the actual force that gets added is going to scale when you change your move speed. So the acceleration is essentially relative, which I like, but that's a preference. And then the next thing that we need to do is also, I think, limit the actual move speed. So let's, let's make a flat or essentially a horizontal movement of the rigidbody just so we can get sort of an in-the-moment picture. Let's do a new vector 3, and that'll be rigidbody.linearvelocity.x, comma, 0, comma, and then the linear velocity dot set. This is essentially a flattened vector, so we can check if, you know, uh, if not counting gravity, is he moving too quickly on the x of the set plane. Uh, if that's the case, so let's do if horizontal, oops, horizontal dot magnitude is greater than the move speed, which is how fast we want to allow ourselves moving. Then we can just set the rigidbody.velocity equals to a new vector 3, that essentially has our target velocity dot x with the original body dot velocity dot y and the target, oops, target velocity dot set. Um, that becomes now we're essentially also limiting the movement. And the last thing is just the camera rotation. Uh, so let's also just get that out of the way before we hop in and test. And that's the first thing. Let's just check that the input dot camera forward dot has value, just since we made it a nullable. And if it does so, let's build the camera forward from the actual value to so input.cameraforward.value. And then let's flatten it on the y-axis just to make sure that our player won't be looking up and down. And then if there actually is a proper or valid direction here, so let's check the square magnitude and then let's just check that, that is larger than some very small number. Uh, and if that is the case, then we want to set the rigid body dot move rotation to the quaternion dot look rotation the cam forward oops and let's just normalize that all right cool so that should basically do that lastly we also need to make sure in later wake that we actually initialize the first person camera so we can also here get the camera and we can call in it on that if we are the owner so if it's owner then we initialize the camera uh, right and this should really be most of the first person movement pretty much done so let's go and head out on the player and let's add everything that we need, right? So let's add the player movement script and let's add a predicted rigid body. Let's also add some quite high linear damping just to make sure that he actually stops moving when we try to stop moving. And let's also just freeze the rotation on X, Y, and Z because we'll be handling that otherwise with other means. 
And under the predicted transform, let's also just drag and drop the graphics in there to make sure that's good. And now we can feed the camera and we can feed the predicted rigid body like so. And lastly, as you can see, there's a collider on our play visuals. So we want to remove those. And then we just want to add the capsule collider here ourselves. Uh, and of course, make sure to set that up how it should be. Something like that should do the trick. Um, and I also, just as a little extra measure, I always really like adding a little physics material just so the player doesn't actually get stuck to walls. So I'm just going to call this player with the physics material, add no friction. And this way he can essentially rub up against walls and won't get stuck. So now let's enter here and let's try and see. And as you can see now, when we walk around, this works well. WSD movement works. We can look around and rub up against walls and movement will generally work fine. Uh, don't mind that the camera's going through. It's just me being lazy setting up the camera stuff. Um, but yeah, this works. So now let's go and test it with another client. All right, cool. So here we are. And there is the other client. So let's get him out. And as you can see, now we can see the actual rotation. You can see us walk around. We can even push each other around. Again, the camera goes inside each other. But, you know, as you can see, physics work and we can push each other and everything is predicted correctly. So now essentially you have the base of a predicted first person movement setup. Of course, we can also handle rotation of the camera up and down or whatever. So you want to, if you want to see the gun move. Um, but, you know, that can be for future videos. So, you know, remember to let me know in the comments what you'd actually like to see come out of this and we can try and build it together. Cool. So I hope that you'll leave a like, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one.